Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Sorry, oh my gosh. Oh, fire, I feel like a stooge. Sorry, I was just reading uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix, you know, the great comic book written by Chris Claremont and John Byrne. And all of a sudden, I remembered that there's a new X-Men film out that adapts this comic book. And so, you know what? I decided to go see it because I love my X-Men. I love my Dark Phoenix. And let's see how I feel after I've seen the official film. Let's go! You know I can't. The way this review is going to work is it's going to be a review, but it's also kind of going to be like an essay in the sense because uh, there are so many problems with this movie and I need to break them down into fucking sections. Buckle up! Spoilers ahead for Dark Phoenix, but you probably don't give a shit because you haven't seen the movie because it only made 170 million worldwide, which therefore proves don't butcher the source material don't hire directors that have never made fucking movies before to go make $200 million X-Men movies at Hollywood. Don't do it. It never fucking works, bro. Dark Phoenix was actually directed by American cinematic author Simon Kinberg. Here's a great little video of Simon Kinberg actually discussing some characters in his film and how he understands and knows all of them. That's easy. That's chest and terror. Oh no. What is that? <laughs> What am I looking at? I want to like Simon Kinberg as a person. I think he's a very nice person from what I've seen on Instagram. I personally believe Simon Kinberg had no right to make this film. I mean, this movie suffers from Simon Kinberg's insufficient filmmaking knowledge. It's really that simple. There is a scene in the kitchen. You know, the X-Mansion is gigantic. The movies always make it out to be this fucking huge place, right? And the kitchen in this scene is no bigger than my bedroom. It's fucking tiny. I don't understand how a school with like a hundred kids there, some as big as Colossus you imagine, what are they doing in this kitchen? They're not gonna fit in the kitchen. But in the scene, um, Professor X and Beast are talking about how the Phoenix killed Mystique. And Dark Phoenix is all about, you know, the emotional complexity of the X-Men. Or at least that's what Simon Kinberg keeps repeating in every interview he's in. I think the biggest challenge in directing this film was balancing something that was really emotional and raw. And the film really should be an emotional journey. It should be answering a moral question like, do we kill Jean because she's our friend? Uh, but at the same time, she did kill another one of our friends and she's going batshit crazy. So... What do we do? What's morally right? And the kitchen scene, I think, is Simon Kinberg's attempt to communicate that. But the direction is really poor. It feels like a rehearsal take in the sense that the delivery is just off. Even the movement of the actors, like Professor X comes into the scene and there's a, a, bottle, of, a bottle of whiskey to his side and he takes an absurdly long amount of time to grab the glass or grab the bottle and then the glass. And it's not like a, that's a directing thing. Like, it's not like, I don't imagine Simon Kinberg's like, all right, James McAvoy, here, hear me out here. You're going to take 20 extra seconds to grab the glass because it shows how, how nuanced and, and how layered and how sad your character is. Okay. Do you, do you understand James? I don't think that's how it happened. I think it was more, um, Simon Kinberg forgot to give a direction, and so James McAvoy is like, do I grab the glass, I guess? I don't know. You know, Nick, Nick Holt is a great actor. Um, he, he would have been Batman, if not for Robert Pattinson, who is another brilliant actor. He's really bad in this scene, basically because there is no direction given to him. They're like, the scene is really quiet and mellow, and then it just erupts. And there's no steady build-up. It's just like, uh, well, you killed her! Really poor. You know, it seems like a fine first or second take. But as a director, I think you should ask for more of your actors. I think you should actually direct your actors. You know, Simon Kidberg is coming into this franchise with actors like James McAvoy and Nicholas Holt. He's directing a scene with those two. 
who are two phenomenal actors, right? That's not including the fact that Michael Fassbender and Jessica Chastain are also in this film. You know, most first-time directors would kill for one of them, but he's got all four, you know? And what he's produced is just not worthy of their talents at all. I don't know. I mean, is that the... the, the um... Had I not read interviews with Simon Kimberg, I never would have known this movie was set in the 1990s. You know, the movie opens up with a Glen Campbell song in 1975. So... I'm not really sure at what point um, the movie was meant to indicate that this is in the 90s. You know, Professor X, for instance, there's a scene where he's wearing like a black turtleneck and corduroy pants. And when I went to see the film, I looked down at myself and saw that, oh shit, I was wearing the same outfit as Professor X. I don't understand why that's a 90s fashion choice because I'm wearing that outfit now. And I'm not trying to be 90s more than that look, I guess, is kind of 70s. So it's just very strange. You know, there isn't even music from the 90s in this movie. You know, there's no Radiohead. There's no fucking Pixies. I was thinking the other day, why is Champagne Supernova by Oasis not in this fucking film? It makes so much sense. Why wouldn't you have a scene where Jean's in her room and Cyclops is there or some shit? And she's blasting some oasis. That's how you get people to know, oh, whoa, this is the 90s, bro. Champagne Supernova. That's a fucking banger of a song. I don't know. I mean, is that the... the, the um... One of the reasons why Dead's Future Past really does feel like a film from the 70s is that the president is Richard Nixon, who was the president at the time. In the 70s, he was the president of the United States. And in the scene with... The president at the end of Days of Future Past, some dude is playing Richard Nixon. So the audience is like, oh shit, this is really the, the 70s because, you know, we can tell there's someone that was the president in the 70s. That would mean that this film is in the 70s. Jump to Dark Phoenix and the president isn't Bill Clinton. He's not George Bush's dad, George Bush. He's just Hannah Baker's dad from 13 Reasons Why. You know, it's like... Don't expect me to care if you don't even care. Play some 90s music. Make fucking Bill Clinton the president. Have some sort of indication that this is the 90s. Have Nightcrawler dress up like Will Smith from The Fresh Prince. Isn't that funny? No. no. We'll figure everything out together. Just come back to me. Come back to me. Come, come, come back. Come, 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 come. Uh -huh. This movie's a great example on why you should not just tell the audience everything. Scott Summers and Jean Grey in the X-Men comic books, they are the heart and soul of the X-Men. They are the Superman and Lois Lane of the X-Men franchise. It is such a beautiful relationship and it's really layered and really interesting and no movie has managed to capture it and that fucking annoys me. In this movie, Scott and Jean's relationship is borderline non-existent. You know, don't get me wrong, they, they kiss. Uh, Scott tells Jean that he, he, he loves her a lot. But, you know, I don't fucking believe it. No one believes that shit because we never got to see them falling in love. We're just being told that these two characters love each other and yet there's zero chemistry. It doesn't look like they've ever paid more than like five minutes attention to each other. It's just so bullshit. You know, one of the reasons why Charles and Eric's friendship is so layered and interesting is because in first class, we spend a lot of time with them discovering their friendship. We see them developing as partners. In Dark Phoenix, Scott and Jean just begin as a couple, which could work if we spent more than like 10 minutes with them throughout the whole film. Scott and Jean should be the main players in this film. Jean should be the main character with Scott as like a secondary character. That's how this story should work. And it's not how the film works. You know, I feel bad for Sophie Turner and Ty Sheridan as they are both great choices for Jean and Scott respectively. And they really do try their hardest, especially uh, Sophie Turner, who I think is getting 
some unnecessary hate for this film. I don't think she's bad. I think she's quite good. I just think that the direction and the chosen takes are just not the best. Her best line delivery is in the trailers and it's not in the film. When I lose control, bad things happen. But it feels good. The way she delivers that is menacing and great. Not in the film at all. A very, very bold creative choice to make Cyclops drop the one F-bomb in the film. If you touch her, I'll fucking kill you is one of the funniest F-bombs ever. Poor little Ty Sheridan, you know, he looked like he'd never said that word before. It's like he'd never heard anyone say fuck. And he's like, I don't know how to say this word. And then the best part is like Magneto's reaction. He's just like, doesn't even acknowledge that. He just skips over it completely and it makes it 20 times funnier. You're always sorry, Charles. And there's always a speech. But nobody cares anymore. I don't know. I mean, is that the, 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 um... Let's talk about something that YouTube obviously loves talking about. Let's talk about feminism and how Simon Kimberg's interpretation of feminism is women fighting each other for power. I don't understand why Jessica Chastain is in this film. I don't understand why Simon Kimberg decided that the X-Men franchise needed aliens in it. Like, it's incredibly unnecessary to put either Jessica Chastain or those people in this film. And I don't want to sound like Grace Randolph hating on Jessica Chastain because I don't hate Jessica Chastain. I just don't think she needs to be in this movie at all. You know, I understand that the comic book has aliens in it, and I understand that the Phoenix Force is a space entity. You don't need to explain that to me, Simon Kimberg. I get it. Unlike you, Simon Kimberg, I, I've read this many times. I understand what happens in the Dark Phoenix saga. I'm, I'm well aware of the events of the Dark Phoenix saga, so you don't need to tell me that Aliens are in it, you know, but this is not how you do it. Simon Kimberg very obviously thinks that he's making a feminist film here. Nowhere is that more obvious than that horrendous ex-women line. And by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to ex-women. It's so stupid because if you go back one film, the person training these students is Mystique. You're not kids anymore. You're not students. You're X-Men. I've seen interviews with Simon Kimberg where he talks about how Charles is, is repressing Jean and how when she breaks free with the Phoenix, it's, it's empowering. And that's all well and good, but why make the villain of the film a soulless female? In a very basic view of the film's interpretation of Dark Phoenix, it's basically about some alien woman played by Jessica Chastain who wants to take this really amazing power away from a younger woman played by Sophie Turner. If you want to look broadly, it's really a movie about a woman hating another woman because she has more power than her, which is a really horrible interpretation of feminism and completely against what the fourth wave feminism, which is what the current iteration of it is all about. I don't know. I mean, is that the, 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 um... This is the second adaptation of uh, the Chris Claremont, John Byrne, Dark Phoenix saga. And it's also the second to be written by Simon Kimberg. And it's also, also, the second adaptation to not include Mastermind or the Hellfire Club. Uh, for those of you that don't know the storyline in the comics, Mastermind is basically this, this mutant who leads the Hellfire Club and he manipulates Jean to become the Dark Phoenix. It's very strange that the Dark Phoenix adaptation a year after, or two years I guess, after Me Too, doesn't have a manipulative male as the antagonist, because I feel like that would make sense. You know, I think that a movie that's trying to be feminist or trying to have female empowerment messages, I don't think it's right that the main conflict of it is between two women. I don't think that really makes that much sense. I think a more interesting interpretation of the Dark Phoenix story would be if there were three male perspectives fighting over Jean's destiny and Jean basically being like, you are just three men 
why would I listen to you? You know, why should you have any opinion on what I should be doing? And, you know, those three could have been Charles, Magneto and Mastermind. You know, I think that in a post Me Too movement, uh, I think that's a more unique version of the story. The movie is just a really stupid take on feminism or a take on the Dark Phoenix story, which is a really pro women story about how the only people who should decide a woman's fate is the woman. You know, Jean decides to kill herself in that storyline to save everyone, to destroy the Phoenix Force. And in this film she does the same thing, but at the same time she doesn't really empower anyone. It's just like, you know, oh, I gotta kill the baddie now. Oh no, I'm gonna die as well. Um. Dark Phoenix raises a point that was already raised in The Last Stand and raised even earlier than that in the original Dark Phoenix comic book. But it raises this idea that Charles Xavier is kind of a bad dude. And he certainly is to a degree. But I think the way the movie portrays him as a villain is really kind of stupid. Because it doesn't really make him out as like a complex person more than just a guy who's very obviously in the wrong. Like instead of exploring the fact that this guy does give them a home and he does make them fight threats that could ultimately kill them... The movie is more interested in just how Charles is kind of cocky. And I think that's a really dumb thing to focus on, especially when there's a lot more going on behind the scenes or underneath. It focuses on a very obvious fact that, you know, Charles didn't tell Jean that her father didn't want her after she killed her mum, after she accidentally murdered her mum. It just sort of makes Charles out to be a fucking idiot more than just a bad dude. They don't focus on the fact that Charles manipulated Jean to keep the power repressed, which I think is a much more unique and interesting story to tell. They focus on the fact that he didn't tell her that her dad was a fuckwit. I think it, it speaks for the problems of this movie in general. This movie is just very surface level. There is absolutely nothing going on behind the scenes. You know, if you want to look deep in this film, you will find nothing. It's not like a Zack Snyder BBS or it's not like, you know, the Dark Knight or anything where there are obvious symbols and obvious metaphors and obvious deeper meanings. This movie is just extremely face value. And that fucking sucks. Hello, old friend. If there's one thing the MCU should take away from the Fox films and take away from Dark Phoenix, it's that line. Hello, old friend. I think that a dream scenario would be the first time Magneto and Professor X meet each other in the MCU, Magneto just whips out the hello old friend. I just think that would be the fucking funniest thing ever. I would cry. Please, Kevin Feige, I know you don't watch these videos, but please watch this one video and listen to this fact. Please include that line in the first X-Men movie. I will give you all my money. It'd be amazing. There are a few shots in this film that are really cool. And you can tell that Simon Kinberg does kind of have a vision for comic book panels, I guess. But they're just not epic because they don't, and I don't want to sound like a nerd here, but they don't have the suits. There are so many shots in like the third act or even the second act that could have been, whoa, like this is the fucking X-Men, you know, and all they needed were their suits. The third act is a big problem because it's so fucking dark. And a lot of the clothing they wear is really dark. So I couldn't tell shit. I, I didn't know who the fuck was jumping around. All I knew was that Cyclops was, was blasting people because there was a big red laser coming out. It's just give them the suits. There's a reason why they have fucking distinct suits in the books. Number one, to tell them apart. And number two, to communicate to the, the mutant kids watching the X-Men fight and, and reading about it in the paper that there are superheroes like them. So what? We wear matching costumes and smile in pictures that to make everyone feel safe? That is a small price to pay for keeping the peace. By risking our people to save theirs. Yes, yes. You know, the X-Men franchise with Fox has been missing a level of wonder. With Dark Phoenix being the closing chapter, I could be upset, I could be really devastated and frustrated that they've ruined my favourite comic book characters again, but you know what? I don't really give a shit. 
we have the MCU, you know, there is, there is the, the Avengers films are great. The X-Men are going to be fucking beautiful in the Marvel universe. Kevin Feige is going to deliver the X-Men film, the X-Men franchise that fans have always wanted to see. And I personally cannot fucking wait. So in the end, you know, Dark Phoenix is a really disappointing movie. It's, it's upsetting. It's a complete, you know, bastardization of a, brilliant storyline that so many people love at the end of the day it's it's a hit list of all the things wrong with the fox x-men films with very little of what they get right but in the end dark phoenix is it's just it's just very very bad i'm gonna go read this